again this week. Warp and Woof Radio, Radio Next.tv at the Cool Groove site. We come to you every Wednesday from 11 till noon. Grateful to be here. Grateful to introduce you to good Christian folk who are doing good around the community. Our tagline is based on Titus chapter 3, verses 1, 8, and 14. Do good, do good, do good. And our focus is always on Christians who are in the community doing those things. A, a shout out to Com- the Cominius Institute, which actually sponsors this show. We cross three bridges at Cominius. The first is into the college arena at IUPY, helping Christian young people to think Christianly about their subjects. Then into communities, which is basically the reason for this radio show. We're helping folks uh, to come uh, to be introduced to each other, to make connections around the Indianapolis area with specific interests in bridging cultures and with even more specific interests in uniting black and white leaders across Indianapolis. And then finally into culture. We're very interested in engaging all different kinds of issues, and we do this constantly through writing, teaching, speaking, so we're always happy to be engaged in that particular process. But today we have a special guest here with us. Uh, Jenny Stam is here for uh, to introduce not just what her work is, but also Modern Woodman. So, Jenny, good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're glad that you're here, and thank you for uh, promoting what you do at Modern Woodman. Why don't you give a shout-out to Modern Woodman of America and tell everybody what that's about. All right, I can do that easy. Modern Woodman of America is the um, by far the best company I have ever worked for. Hmm. Um, we are 136 years old. Hmm. Um, we are an insurance company, for life insurance, annuities, and then we also have a broker dealer where we do, um, you know, investments and mm-hmm. in, in financial products like that. But mm-hmm. we're a fraternal, um, and most people are like, "What does it mean when you say you're a fraternal insurance company?" Um, it means we operate similarly to a like a credit union versus a bank. Mm-hmm. Um, all of our profits go back into the communities in which we serve. Yeah. And so I have chapters and I have members and I have money that I can put back into my mm-hmm. local community and that's what I do. You've actually done that for Comenius, uh, so we're grateful for that. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Yeah, so Modern Woodman is not simply uh, an insurance company. Um, kind of tease that out a little bit further for folks so that they understand why it's different than just regular okay. old run-of-the-mill insurance companies. Um, we... There's so many directions I could go, but we, one of the things we don't do is we don't do national ad advertising. Mm-hmm. So that means our budget can be put to to better serve our communities. So we're slower to grow because 136 years old, and we're, I don't I don't even think we're at the million member. We're just under the million member mark. So it's all very mm-hmm. word of mouth. Oh. It's all very um, organic growth. It's all done by people getting involved. So we've had a, a regional team here in Indiana growing for about eight, seven or eight years maybe. Um, and so a lot of people from Indiana that are members were transplants from other areas of the country that already had, because some areas were just absolutely huge. And then in Indianapolis, I started three years ago, I'm going into my fourth year. People are like, modern modern woman, who do you work for? (laughs) Modern woodmen. And we were created for um, basically the the pioneers that were building the communities in Iowa Mm -hmm. back in the 1800s initially, and that's kind of how we got our start and got our name. Well, it's important, I think, for everybody to understand that there's actually history to some of these organizations. And to understand a little bit better about the history of this one is important just as much as anything else. So speaking of history, let's give a little history of yourself Okay. (laughs) uh, so everybody knows who you are and what you do and all the connections that you have. (laughs) Oh, man. I used to move a lot. Really? Um, (laughs) I didn't know that. Okay, between the age of 20 and 35, I moved 15 times. Oh, my word. And some of that was out of state and some of that was out of country. Okay. And... Some of that was from one country to another country while I was out of the country. Um, so I lived overseas. I lived in England and lived in Scotland for a while. I had moved over there with my cat. I had just recorded a demo a CD when I was living in Nashville after my mom had passed. And I was single and made connections, and I was going to meet a British man. And, and then I come home. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to laugh raise, so loud there. I'm sorry. I come home to raise money to go back, and I met my husband, who is far from British He's um he's from Liston, Indiana. He's amazing construction worker. He's a woodman. Truck driving, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baseball cap wearing, yeah. yeah okay. So um, right. but I'm from the west side of Indianapolis. 
Um, so back up just for a moment, because mm -hmm. I don't know that I fully understand the whole cut a demo bit. So oh, yeah. you're a singer. I've been singing since I was three. So yeah. how many Grammys uh, do you have here? On I, your I have all kinds of ones, pretend ones that are in my head. <laughs> um, I don't have any Grammys. I'm, I'm just <laughs> teasing. So tell us about uh, the music background. I mean, you know, obviously you've been doing this for a long time. And tell us about what you're, how you sing now. I sing at my church. Shout out to my local Greenwood Vineyard Community Church. Mm -hmm. Hey, family. Mm -hmm. I love my church. And that's where I... That's my where I serve nice. on the worship team and sing and um, nice. yeah it's all good. I, I started singing at three. I couldn't even read the words yet, so mm -hmm. I memorized and they were Gaither. My first two songs were Gaither songs. Okay. I am a promise and Jesus. I heard you had a big house. Wow. So nice. Yep. So I I went to Nashville um, right after my mom passed away, and that was in two thousand and two. Um, no particular reason, just knew God was opening doors. Mm. Didn't know a thing about music industry. Didn't even really want to be a, a a star. I just went there and found, and God had a plan for me. He put me in a, in a vineyard church. Mm. Put somebody in my life that was a professional drummer who wanted to do a demo. Someone else in my life who let me use his studio for free. when I All I did was babysit his wonderful children. Mm. Um, and God's lesson for me is that you don't have to know how to get from A to Z, you just have to follow the steps. And he put everything in my path to get a beautiful CD done. It was mm. absolutely wonderful, nice. I, my first chance at writing. Um, and he did it without me nice. knowing anything. That's great. I was clueless. I didn't, honestly, I didn't realize I was sitting next to celebrity. So, you know, this is, this is quite something. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Oh, this is good. So uh, let's get back to uh, the real reason why we're here today yeah. <laughs> to discuss uh, the kinds of work that you're doing in and around Indianapolis. So let's just launch into the, the whole concept of planning for your future. Mm -hmm. And you can take this any direction you would like to, but, you know, as you've told me in the past, people don't. Either they don't haven't thought about this, they don't want to think about this. You know, take that in a direction that mm -hmm. helps us understand why we ought to think about this. Okay, it is the least um, desired conversation I think that mm -hmm. anyone wants to have. I really think I have the hardest job in the world, okay. but I and I love it and I'm called to it because if if it's been done wrong in the past or if it's been done wrong by not doing anything, I've mm -hmm. done it. Okay. I did it, and so. God gave me a passion for it because I sit here and think um, I got into banking and that kind of got my start. Matt Stoops, he's my friend. He's uh, got, got me hired into banking. Um, and I had this seven-year journey in banking and then Modern Woodman started to recruit me. And I was like, I don't want to get my licensing. I don't think I want to do investments. I'm pretty comfortable right here with the bank and my clients and... Hmm. He just kept nudging and nudging and making my job more and more and more difficult, and I was less and less and less appreciated. And eventually, my position was eliminated. Oh. So I like had I was forced to make this decision. Hmm. Um, the whole journey was to get me to where I'm at now, um, and that's to get people to want to talk about it, hmm. to want to um, not be a slave to the lack of planning, a slave to debt, a slave to mm. not saving, not knowing how much to save, thinking we can't save, a slave to got to have it, got to have it now kind mm. of mentality. Um, we are so controlled. And, and uh, what we do with our money says so much about, um, about us and about our hearts and how free mm. we really are. And when we're addicted to shopping and we're addicted to having to have something new all the time, mm. that's an unhealthy place to be. Yeah. And so... When you start to tackle that, you start to get healthier. When you talk about the issue of consumerism and materialism, uh, of course, you'll always have my ear because this is uh, a concern uh, for us, those of us who actually care about money. Uh, we talk about things uh, from a biblical point of view, at, such as stewardship, mm -hmm. uh, husbanding our money uh, properly, and that has nothing to do with husband and wife. It has everything to do with the concept of shepherding and making sure that you have these things. And then I'm always mindful of what Proverbs talks about, which is a consistent refrain about uh, money. Uh, and one, of, the, one yeah. of those statements that I think is really powerful there is that we accrue money little by little. Yep. It's not something that happens overnight. Right. So speak to that issue of the long-termness. That's not even a word. I just made it up. The <laughs> long-termness of 
what it means to invest for the future and why that's important. Oh, and I'm, it's hard for me to stay, I get so excited about this stuff. Um, great. When you start, if you don't know what your goal is, then if we don't have a goal and we don't have a, a written goal, then we usually tend to postpone starting anything because we really don't know what the end goal is. And so when you start to have that conversation with somebody such as myself, you look at your entire picture, you look at everything, you look at um, your current savings. Are you saving? Are you just giving yourself leftovers? Are you even doing that? Mm. Are you, where, where is each penny going? You know, assigning every penny. And it takes a lot of work. Um, but when you start to take charge of those areas, and, and it all comes from knowledge, it all comes from knowledge, prudence, like Proverbs thirteen sixteen. So those who are prudent mm. act with knowledge, but mm. fools expose their folly. And that's what my practice is based on. You have to have the knowledge. So what I do is just meet with people, and we talk, and we, um, we get educated. So then we can make better decisions for ourselves. Mm. So in the long term, obviously, if you start saving money early, you've got compounding. You've got all that time where it's working for you. Um, the example that we use in my I do what's called a planning for life when I'm meeting with people is... If you start saving, let's say you want this particular scenario was they wanted 150,000 um, by the time they were in their 60s, which really does not go as far as people think. But let's just start there. Sure. So in your 20s, it takes setting aside about 98 dollars, 100 bucks a month, um, that in something that's growing, you know, maybe five percent. Mm. It takes all that time. If you wait until your 30s to start, mm -hmm. then you're looking at um, more like um, a car payment. So we're talking about $300 and some, okay. you know, three times as much. Yeah. If you wait till your 40s, then you're dealing with a mortgage payment. Mm. Then you have to set aside, you know, $1,200, 1300 1400 a month. It becomes impossible um, in most in most situations, mm -hmm. and it's because you don't have that time on your side. Mm -hmm. So unless you want to be in your 40s and then start thinking about how I'm going to eat when I reach the point that I maybe can't work anymore, maybe I don't ever want to retire, but maybe my health tells me that I can't keep doing mm -hmm. such and such. If I want to eat and if I want to have a roof over my head and if I want to have any quality of life, mm -hmm. i got to start thinking about that now. And if I wait till my 40s, then it's going to be harder. It's going to be a lot more expensive, and um, it's going to be just a lot more difficult. Mm. The issue of time is an issue that everybody faces. We're talking to Jenny Stamm this morning from Modern Woodman, and we're grateful for her uh, emphasis on what it means to actually save for the future. We're going to continue here after a one-song break, and when we come back, we'll talk with Jenny some more about why it's important to plan for the future. You're listening to Warp and Woof Radio at RadioNext.tv at the Cool Groove site. One song. We'll be right back. And we're back. Warp and Woof Radio at RadioNext.tv at the Cool Groove site. And you are joining us on Wednesday morning from 11 to about 11.50 in the morning. And every uh, Wednesday we bring to you a new guest from in and around Indianapolis. We're grateful for all of the good people, good Christian folks, who are doing good in and around Indianapolis. Uh, I just see Dave Knoll is watching. Thanks, Dave, for joining us here. Dave was one of our guests here a few weeks back, and we're grateful for the good work that he does in and around uh, Indianapolis. Today we're joined by Jenny Stam, Modern Woodman of America, and this particular organization has to do with financial planning, and that's what Jenny is here to talk with us about. In the first hour, we talked about the necessity of, and the importance, frankly, of time, and how people don't really think about the future as they ought to, perhaps, and in terms of planning for the future and planning financially. So during our break, and obviously we didn't take a break during Facebook Live, but during our break uh, from the radio podcast, uh, we were talking, Jenny and I, about where we wanted to go with the conversation. And the next question uh, that we really wanted to address was this issue of what is the barrier that keeps people from discussing this in the first... Uh, I. Uh, segment of our hour, we've talked about the issue of time. Now we want to talk about what keeps people from uh, actually engaging this very important topic. Yeah, and that's something that I had told told you. I'm almost working on a sort of a questionnaire. Mm. I might start um, polling people 
um, I met with um, a friend of mine who runs a non for profit called Peace Restored out in Mooresville. Um, it's a wonderful group. And I sat with her for a few hours and we were talking about what I do, what she does. And she told me that because so many people are already out there kind of doing, she didn't want to duplicate. She mm. wanted to do something different. And what she had done was everybody that she met along the way, she asked them what worked, what didn't work, what they liked, what mm. would, what, what things could she do different. And she did, she gathered data. Mm. And I thought, well, I need to do that in my own practice. Cause I don't want to be just another person that does financial planning and, um, and you know, in life insurance and annuities and all that kind of stuff. I want to know what is it that's keeping people from actually wanting to have that conversation. Mm. And mm. people are going to have to be, feel free to be real with me. Like even people that are watching on the Facebook live, you know, if I could just know, is it a lack of trust? Is it, they don't think it's that big a deal. Is it, they've been burned by somebody in the past. Is it, they think they can do it themselves. Mm. Um, there are so many things that you can do by working with a professional and I don't charge anybody for my time. I will coach and educate and work on budget and planning um, and do all of this stuff for people, and I don't charge them. Even when I reach the point where I can, because I am working on a, a, a Series 7, and I could wrap a wrap fee around it if I want to. I'm not going to because I don't need to. I'm not going to need to. Mm. I just want to know um, what would it take for people to say, okay, let's have the conversation. Because it always starts out with just one conversation. Mm -hmm. We do what's called a planning for life, and we go through the little wheel, and we look at planning, or we look at, and we look at insurance, and we look at how insurance is a good foundation for any good financial plan mm -hmm. and why. Mm -hmm. And then we look at savings, and we look at retirement planning, and we look at retirement distribution, and we look at um, estate planning and that that's not just for the wealthy and that there are things that everyone needs to do that if they have a house, if they have children. Um, and when I meet with people, they generally don't know any of this stuff. They don't understand that, you know, in order to protect their children, they really need to have a written will so the state of Indiana doesn't step in and decide what happens to their children if something happens. So there's things like that that seem real small, but they're really a big deal when you think about it. Um, we go through employee benefits and uh, for small business owners and succession planning. Um, and so we go through that whole wheel, and then we start talking about, okay, where are you at with stuff? What's important to you? What, what sticks out? Um, do you save? Um, do you pay yourself last? Do you give yourself a leftover? Do you even think about it? Um, what happens to you if something happens to your spouse? You know, can you pay the mortgage payment or do you need both incomes? Um, what, you know, do you, all, we go through all that stuff and then we find what's important to whoever, to whomever I'm meeting with and we start there and then we start chipping away at it and it's never a one and done. My clients become like family mm -hmm. and I go over there and I'll say, here's your homework for the next time. Um, I want you to get the information on your 401k at work. I want you to find out how much you're being matched. I want you to find out, you know, this, this, and this. And then we get together maybe in a week or two. And then we start looking at those things. And mm. then we find a little bit more and dig a little bit more. And then we might mm. meet a few weeks later. And it's a process. And a lot of my clients bake cookies for me <laughs> or have veggie trays. No, you don't have to do any of that stuff, but we'll make hot tea and we'll sit and talk. I, they become like family. We become like friends. Nice. So it doesn't really even feel like work, but when they realize that we've done things that they didn't think were possible and mm. suddenly they can retire when they didn't, all they did was worry about it. Mm. How am I going to retire? And next thing you know, they are, mm. you know, I've got clients that are loyal to the end with me. Nice. That's great. Well, it certainly seems like this is something that you were made for. So, um, you know, coming from Nashville and then over to Great Britain and uh, coming back here to, to the great state of Indiana, um, actually helping out all of us Hoosiers here has been a, a blessing for all of us. Uh, let's take that to the next level. Uh, we started with the question about the barrier that keeps us uh, from discussing this. Uh, you, you had said that you were gathering data, you were asking mm -hmm. questions and so on. What does your data tell you? What are the major obstacles that people are saying, here's the reason why I don't want to talk about this? What I have found so far is that if I don't talk about it, 
it doesn't exist and it's not a problem. Whoa. <laughs> uh, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't talk about it, it's not a problem. If I don't talk about it, um, it won't happen. If I don't talk about it, nothing will, my family will all be okay. There'll never be any tragedies um, if I don't talk about it. It's mm. almost as if they think that by us discussing it, we're jinxing or doing... We're not. I always tell people, I'm not speaking this into your life, you know, the power of words. It's, this is being a proactive and planning for mm. every possible what if. If this happens, and so my job is to try to get as much bang out of your buck, I, I guess you can say. If you're paying a premium for something or paying into something, my job as a professional is to look and say, okay, how much, how much can we make this work for us? How many different scenarios can mm. this cover? So... If this happens when you're this age, then you can do this. But what if this doesn't happen? What if this happens? Well, with the same plan, we can do this. Mm. Or, well, what if this happens? Well, you can do this. Um, as opposed to just a short-term fix or just a kind of a Band-Aid on something. You pay into something for a while, then it's gone. Mm. Um, I very much dig very, very deep and like to find ways that we are putting some permanent solutions in place mm. without necessarily having a permanent premium. There are a lot of uh, statements in Scripture that deal with this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an Old Testament guy, so I automatically go back to places like Leviticus, Deuteronomy. And what we find in passages like this uh, are actually repeated in places like 1 Timothy chapter 5, where uh, Paul says you need to take care of your family, first of all. And the second statement that he makes that's pretty dogmatic is that uh, when you uh, have people who are widows, mm -hmm. and this is very unusual to me, frankly, that he actually comes out and gives a date. He says, widows who are 60 years of age yeah. and then who have no family. So there's an emphasis on family takes care of family. Mm -hmm. And then if the family doesn't exist to take care of that individual, then the church family steps mm -hmm. in. So let's, let's take this in a transition in that direction. How much do you see uh, churches, leadership in churches, saying to uh, individuals, hey, this is something that you really, okay. <laughs> Talk about that for a moment. Not, not much. I, I, and I, outside of the tithing um, yeah. teaching um, right. that you get at churches, um, and then there are churches that will do the Dave Ramsey program and mm. teach people how to you know, get out of debt. Um, and I think he's got some wonderful, wonderful things that he offers. So but there are some benefits. There are there. some benefits. Yeah. It's not the end all, and it's not the yeah. only pathway, right. is what I always like to say. But everyone needs to have somebody in their corner working specifically, not just yeah. not just to go and um, you know do cash envelopes and learn how to get out of debt. That's a wonderful start. We don't want to be in debt, but we also there's so many other things that are part of the planning for life mm. wheel that are not discussed in a in a financial, maybe a financial peace class or, and I'm not dissing, I'm not, I mean, I think they're wonderful, but I just, outside of that, I've not seen a whole lot of interaction um, or, or promotion of that from the churches. Well, let me, I'll take this okay. and speak to this issue. Okay. Uh, let me say that uh, if we are going to declare the whole counsel of God, which is what scripture teaches our responsibility is, then not only are we supposed to be teaching doctrine and theology and all of the, the very foundational issues, of course, that we believe in, but we have to, wait for it, apply the Bible to real life. So uh, yeah. here's just one example of how that ought to be happening and how leadership uh, in churches needs to be saying to people, hey, uh, are you practicing the uh, principles and dictates out of Deuteronomy and First Timothy and how are you uh, doing in that regard? And, oh, there's, you know, Jenny Stam's over here. She's able to help. Um, so we're grateful for church leadership. That's not an issue at all here. Uh, we're just suggesting that this needs to be talked about more by Christians, and that's actually the reason why we're having this conversation on the radio today. Can I add something oh, to that? Oh, please add whatever. I do want to shout out again to um, to my church. I've been part of the Vineyard and Greenwood um, off and on, since 2001, off when I lived out of the state and out of the country, and then on when I've been here. And what I've seen recently um, is um, Pastor Jim Bricker has been amazing at 
sharing and being transparent mm. with what our own church is doing mm. with our own finances and and being very specific with the vision and with the dream and and what's happened with property that we purchased and property that we're selling and you know the state of the state of the union you know the state of where we're at as sure. a church and been very transparent with that and i will say i think that's um that's only strengthened my relationship and my desire to continue to grow with mm -hmm. my church family because transparency is is important and being good stewards with the tithes and offerings that come in is important yeah. and i'm I, i'm seeing that so i want to give a little bit of a sure. shout out there it's important that we understand that uh, we learn by example, and certainly that ought to be um, the case with Christian leadership in and around uh, not only our own families and lives, but throughout Indianapolis, Indiana, and the world. Yep. You're listening to Warp and Woof Radio at RadioNext.tv at the Cool Groove site. We're going to take a one-song break. When we come back, we're going to hear more from Jenny Stam about the importance of financial planning and the importance of how we ought to begin to apply this to the realities of our own lives. We'll take a one-song break. We'll be right back. And we're back. Warp and Woof Radio at RadioNext.tv at the Cool Groove site. Come to you every Wednesday from 11 till about 11.50 in the morning. Grateful for your participation with us. Whether or not you're actually watching us live on Facebook or you're listening live in uh, earbuds at your desk, at your business, or you're going to pick up the podcast later on in the archived uh, Facebook Live, uh, we're glad that you've joined us here today. And one of the things that I always want to emphasize to folks is on our uh, Cominius website page, so if you go to cominiusinstitute.org or .com, you will see on the first page, the opening page, three one-minute videos which explain what we do and who, we're, who we are and what we're about. Uh, the first one is about what we do at the college. The second is about what we do through radio and the communities. And the third is about culture. So if you were listening and uh, actually happened to hear in the background this uh, voice that was my voice, and that was uh, the commercial about Christians and culture. This morning we're talking with Jenny Stam about the importance of future planning, financial planning, and this is not just for individuals but for families, churches investing in this as well, uh, their time and energy and thoughtfulness as it relates to teaching their people about these ideas and principles that come right out of Scripture. So Jenny, we've, we've gone through two segments, a very important uh, segments. In the first segment, we talked about the importance of people remembering that they only have so much time mm -hmm. and to recall this. The second segment, we talked about what are the barriers keeping people from discussing this. In this last segment, we'd like to, to have you give us some life examples, uh, the pros and the cons, what you've seen good, what you've seen bad, and maybe even ugly, and the difficulties uh, and the benefits that people have enjoyed as they've thought through these issues. Okay. Well, one thing I didn't mention earlier, and I should have, I don't know why I didn't, because it was true for me, one of the biggest obstacles to um, wanting to sit down and talk to somebody is we're embarrassed mm. of what we may or may have done or not done. Mm. We have this, what if they're going to judge me? What if I'm not where I should be? Uh. There's, there's a certain amount of shame, um, even for people that... Relatively speaking, if you you know compare, uh, have done an amazing job at saving and planning. There's still this part of them that's like, well, have I done enough? And then for me, no one ever asked me. So, and that's one of the things that I learned is when I was in my 20s into my 30s, um, I just was figuring it out as mm -hmm. I went along, like most people. And had somebody been persistent and asked me. I've, I've got some people that I'm still asking three years later, and they just they keep telling me, don't stop asking me, mm. because eventually I'm going to meet with you. Um, so I will. I will always continue to say, hey, can I reach out to you in a few months? Can I reach out to you in a few months? Um, if someone would have asked me, and, not, and then asked me again, and then asked me again, I would have sat down and done a whole lot of different things. Um, I may have been embarrassed or been ashamed that I hadn't done anything yet, but if I had someone like me saying, there's no right or wrong here, let's just sit down and see where we're at, because I believe that the, the truth sets us free. When, the, when, when light is shed on anything, um, it, you're not buried in shame. It, it sets us free, and it's a judgment-free zone as far as I'm concerned. We're just going to sit down and look. We're going to see what we can do, and I've had people come to me um, one couple came to me. They were in their 60s. 
Um, one of them had an old 401k that they hadn't done anything with. They really didn't know why they were meeting with me except that. But we sat down and had an entire conversation and found out that the interest rate on their mortgage was so incredible. It was double mm -hmm. digits. Mm -hmm. it, it had not been refinanced in oh, so wow. long. They were always told to not do it because of the fees. And they were struggling and they were kind of check to check and they were close to being late on their mortgage but not. And I was able to, to partner with one of my friends who's a mortgage broker who was able to get them you know, a refinance which was able to pay off all their other debts that they had, reduce their interest rate, cut their mortgage in half. Oh my word! Um, freed up money in the budget for life insurance, so they both could have life insurance because they didn't have life insurance mm -hmm. and really needed it. Um, and all that came. And it was a several month process, um, but it it basically went from they were living check to check to they could breathe, <laughs> they had their debts paid off, okay, and they could stay in their home. Let me just offer this one little word uh, to everybody: interest kills. Do not go into interest payments if you can at all uh, afford not to do that, um, especially when it comes to mortgages. And, of course, you know, those of us who lived through the Jimmy Carter years where we had double-digit inflation, mm -hmm. double-digit unemployment, double-digit on everything else that was negative in life, um, I think it's really important to, to recognize that um, these kinds of things are awful for especially older folks. Uh, you're talking about a family in their 60s. And, you know, this is where folks need to come alongside them and say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, how can I help this mm -hmm. problem for you? And um, they became friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, I still meet with them regularly. And um, what they're trying to do now, because their kids kind of were walking, their adult kids were kind of walking in that same, um, the same direction. And so now they're watching their children make different decisions now and it's kind of changing I actually have several families like that where I've been working with the parents for a while and they start making different decisions as far as um, you know not ruining their own finances to bail their kids out of stuff and then seeing that what they're modeling for their children is they're destroyed their finances are destroyed if I could just say this to you, it it surely sounds like to me that not only are you saving people money, but you're saving their lives. Oh, I, f I really do feel it. I really do. I mean, this is a this is a passion of mine because, I mean, I've had I've had married couples, you know, crying and sitting in front of me and opening up all, you know, they're talking about some serious stuff. I've had people leave and call me and tell me that they cried their whole way home, which at first I was like, oh, I don't know. I want to make people but at the same time what it did was it made them think sure. about what's going on so they could make different yeah. decisions so there's there's very much a um uh, a psychological emotional um, there's all kinds of things that are very deep rooted when you start talking about your finances and um and and i always thought that i mean me how could i do this how could god use me well, he likes to use the, he likes to take us and take the things that we were the worst at, mm. and then when he teaches us and we can turn things around, he makes it our greatest strength. Mm. Um, I remember when I first started doing this um, in 2016 was when I started beginning of 16. Um, you know, we had a lot of spiritual attacks going on and a lot of things going on in my household. Um, even financially with my husband and he got blacklisted from his union and couldn't find work and we just pressed on and we we pressed on and satan was like how's anybody gonna take you seriously you know mm. you, you know your own income isn't steady right now and how's anybody and we pushed and we pushed and we prayed and we fought and we stayed in church and we it, most this what we went through would have destroyed a lot of marriages because mm. it was very financially very financially straining and difficult and still at the end of the day god came through um, and he literally through my job and through determination and through a lot of studying and a lot of hard work things turned around my mm. husband got a better job with a company that he loves mm. that they they appreciate him um, and we were back on our feet but during that time mm. satan was like how's anybody I literally thought, he's trying to destroy my practice. I'm going to lose my job if I don't figure out a way to get this stuff turned around. So, I mean, I was in it, and I was still going through a lot of the things that my clients go through. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how's anybody going to take me seriously? Well, because we pushed through it. 
we did it, and God made a way. Um, and so that's that's pretty significant for me. When you when I hear you talk about these things, it reminds me of the word perseverance. Um, and just to add to this, I think it's important also to hear, have everybody hear us say, not only are we talking about the importance of planning ahead in terms of time years in advance, but these things take time. It's not overnight fixes right. that we're talking about here. They take time. They change. We change our patterns. We change our thinking. We change our um, what's important to us. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, when we don't feel like we have to buy a knickknack mm. just to fill some kind of emotional void, suddenly mm. we're like, oh. That's freedom. Yeah. When you really don't feel like you need to have something, when you start to recognize that, um, there's a lot of freedom in that. You mean I don't need to eat sugar anymore? I'm not supposed <laughs> to eat sugar. <laughs> no, that, 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 yeah, giving up the chocolate, that's kind of... Um, but I, I have worked with people that have literally not even realized they were in a boat that was sinking. Mm. And somehow they still got led to me. And we were able to turn that Titanic around. Mm. It took a few years. Um, But we were able to fix a problem before they even knew there was a problem. Mm. That's why I like meeting with people when they're, you know, as soon as they, as soon as I meet somebody and I'm like, if they're not meeting with someone, now I'm not in the relationship busting kind of (laughs) role here. If someone has a a person they trust that they're working with, good. Stay with them. Go for it. Um, But most people that I meet are not. And, so that's why I'm like, if, if you're not meeting with someone, if you haven't had those conversations, let's sit down and talk. Let's see if there's a relationship that can be built. And let's see if we can start making these changes in your life. And it takes, you know, a year. A lot of times it takes a year for people right. to finally be like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to meet with her. Finally, just stop asking me. <laughs> <laughs> We've been meeting and, and talking with Jenny Stam here this morning at Warp and Woof Radio. We're going to ask her in just a second to... Uh, Give us a final word in 30 seconds, thereabouts. Uh, but uh, every single week we come to you at 11 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday mornings. Always glad to participate in the, in the Indianapolis community. Uh, next week we'll be having Nabil join us, uh, who is a Lebanese believer. Uh, his work at Church of the Crossing is marvelous and good. We're looking forward to having him on the show. Uh, thankful for the connections uh, by the way, that my chief connections officer, <laughs> yes, my chief connections officer, Polly Riddell, is making Polly. for us. And Josh uh, Collingwood, of course, we need to give him a shout out for all of the tech work that he puts up in terms of podcasts yeah. and running our websites and all the rest of that. And our wonderful, great producer, H.B. Bell, we're always grateful for his leadership and uh, sustenance in all of these things. Uh, thankful again for him and the opportunities we have to engage with him every single week. Jenny, uh, in 30 seconds thereabouts, give us a final word from your perspective on what we need to hear uh, this morning as we leave the show. It's never too late to start to take a look at what you've got going on and make some changes. Um, you know, Take the time out. M- meet with somebody. Interview different people. If you're interested in talking to me, you can send a message to, send a message Dr. to me. Dr. Eckel. I mean, he'll, he'll be happy to connect us. Um, but... Add this uh, to part of your your overall life balance and healing. And ultimately, life insurance, the life insurance that I'm most passionate about is the eternal life insurance piece. Um, but life insurance as life insurance here on earth is something that um, can help uh, protect a lot of people. But it also gives me, you know, an avenue into people's lives to share Jesus' love, mm. too. So... The issue of eternal preparation as well as the temporal financial planning. Both of those things go hand in hand. As far as we're concerned at the Comenius Institute, we will join you again next week. Thanks for joining us this week. You're listening to Warp and Woof Radio at radionext.tv at the Cool Group site. We will return next Wednesday at 11 a.m. We'll see you then.